So the simplest explanation for that is SEMA, the Special Electronic Mission Aircraft, trains pilots and backseaters to provide intelligence to the intelligence apparatus. So really the simplest form is that is making sure that the pilots come through our, our courses and are able to leave here proficient in flying the two variants of airplanes that we have and the backseat students are able to operate their systems on board uh, to be ready day one. Both uh, MCA and RC are divided into two phases, and phase one is teaching them just basically how to fly the aircraft, um, and then it teaches them about the systems, and so on and so forth. And the second phase gets in the mission process, so that gets into more of what they'll be doing at the unit. Uh, my, my role here as an instructor pilot is to do both phases, so I'll take uh, either one or two students uh, all the way through for nine weeks, and basically from the ground up approach, we, talk, we start off with cranking the aircraft, and when they finish, um, They've learned how to fly ISR missions and they're, they're qualified in either the RC or MC-12. I spent eight years as a Black Hawk mechanic slash crew chief and uh, then I went to uh, put my warrant officer packet in, got selected, and got selected for a fixed wing. So flew out of uh, CAE in Dothan and then came here for the RC-12 course. All soldiers are professional but there's a, an inherent level of risk when it comes to flying so you have to be on your A game at all times. UN Payload Operator, GPO, for short, we fly as backseaters on the back of the uh, MC-12 aircraft, different variants, mics, Vaders, Golfs, uh, and operate the main system payload that's on those aircraft, usually the MX-15 and then a primary sensor with that. Operational procedural trainers is what we call them, OPTs, it allows us to play a scenario for the students. Um, depends, you can do a follow, hey, follow this guy through this village, give us call outs, you can do strikes have them uh, do some sort of collateral scans for you know, any uh, threats in the area or civilian casualties. You don't want to you know, blow any civilians up. Uh, it really allows them to just practice, get hammered out what they need before they get into the aircraft. Yeah, it's not for everybody. You know, you get a little air sick, hitting some turbulence, moving around, and it uh, can be tedious, but it can be very exciting or uh, stressful at times, depending on what is happening on the ground. If you're supporting, you know, some of those special forces guys moving into areas, or if you're just, you know, providing overwatch, depends on the uh, situation. Most now are straight out of flight school, so they're uh, very junior, uh, only a couple hundred hours. Uh, but we also get guys, uh, we have a gentleman in the course right now, he's a CW3, he flew Apaches. Uh, he's got a lot of hours, a lot of situational awareness in aviation. Um, so we get kind of a wide variety of what we get here. Yeah, it is a great level of responsibility. I think uh, you can't take it for granted. It's, it's really important, you know, if something goes wrong, you have to be ready for it. If everything goes right, then that's great, but you're responsible not only for the equipment, uh, yourself and you know people on the ground or people in the back. It's primarily four AEBs that these guys are going to and they, these are uh, missions all over the world. Uh, personally I was in Korea for three and a half years and flew this, uh, flew over 1500 hours in Korea. I loved the mission. Uh, I thought we were very very supportive there of the Republic of Korea and as well as interest for the United States of America. So we teach pilots to fly aircraft, but we also teach the backseaters how to perform their missions on the systems as well to actually collect that operation or the, that intelligence. So we've got the, the uh, GPO students and the APG students that are also flying on these airplanes that are also uh, going to INSCOM and the 116th and other units to provide this intelligence to the ground force commanders. I hope that what we do here uh, provides that baseline for them where they can get to those aerial battalions and fully operate with getting to their readiness level one so they can go out there and operate by themselves downrange to be uh, as effective as possible. It's really powerful. I was impressed that uh, it really throws you back in your seat when you go to take off and, and then vice versa when you go to land it has a lot of drag so you, you slow down very quickly as soon as you remove the power. This is the only course that produces MC-12 and RC-12 pilot students to the operational force. All of our pilots in particular are leaving here and they are going uh, to INSCOM to perform uh, the mission of the 116th MI Brigade, Military Intelligence Brigade, so that they can meet their gift map requirements downrange, their global force management requirements, to make sure uh, that these soldiers are ready to show up to the unit and deploy almost immediately uh, so we can provide that intelligence to the intelligence apparatus.